This beautiful spring day, we're going to get up to the 60s. Woohoo! It'll be feel like spring. I love it. I love all the the warm weather and all the things and new life that spring brings. So it is a pleasure to have you here with us this morning. Here at Community Life Church, our our mission is to help people to know God, find purpose and experience life, and we want that for each one of you. Uh, If you are watching us online, it is a pleasure to have you with us as well, and you are welcome to come and join us anytime. All right, well, if you are our first-time guest, there is a Connect card in the seat back pocket in front of you. If you don't mind just taking a moment and filling that out, and maybe you've been coming for a while, and you are deciding that you want to make Community Life Church your home church, but maybe you have never filled out that card because when you first started coming, maybe you didn't want to. Right? You're like, you know what? I want to hide in the background. We get that. We understand. But take a moment and fill that out if you haven't yet and you are deciding to make uh, this your church home. All right. And then after service, you can drop it off in the box in the back. Uh, But we're going to take up our tithe and offerings here. And this is one of the most important opportunities that we have to give back to the Lord who has given us so much. And just real quick, but there are 500 verses in the Bible on prayer and faith, okay? But if we look at verses on money, okay, we want to talk about the importance of money. 2,000 verses cover money in the Bible. 40% of Jesus' parables talk about wealth, finance, money. So it's obviously it's important to him uh, because in Matthew it does tell us for where our treasure is, right, there our heart is also. And so as you give today, just align your heart with the Lord and give back to him. There are multiple ways that you can give. You can give through the offering envelope in the seat back pocket. Uh, you can get text to give. You can give, the, that'll be coming up on the screen, the number for the text to give. Um, but there, you can do the text to give and you can do the website. You can do the app, many ways because it is important and valuable. So I'm going to pray over that. But Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that you have given us so much. And Lord, we want our hearts to align with yours, that our treasure is not in money, but it is in you. And so therefore, we want to give back to you in worship and in honor to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we have prayer every week, and prayer is a wonderful opportunity for us to get to know the Lord. Uh, If we want to Keep moving that PowerPoint slide, unless we're having problems with it. I get that. Um, But we have prayer on Tuesdays at 1030 a.m. and then on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. It's a great great time to just be in the presence of the Lord and to even just grow in communicating with God. Right? It is so valuable and so important. And on that Wednesday night at the same time, you can attend. uh, You can bring your teenagers for youth group in the back. Um, And so youth will be meeting at the same time as prayer this week. And parents, Jack Camp, it's coming up. We're already preparing for it. So make sure you get on there and sign up. It is a wonderful opportunity for your teens. It is churches so much want to be a part of this camp that there is a waiting list for churches to be a part. And last year there were so many teens that signed up that they ran out of bunk beds, didn't want to turn anyone away, so we were bringing blow-up mattresses. And we were piling the kids in, and guess what? They loved it. They don't care. They're not like you and I, right? They're like, blow up mattress floor. I don't care. I'm there. So get your kids there, all right? They will love it, and they will grow with the Lord through that time. All right. We also have our life choice bottles in the back. Make sure that you are filling those up and bringing them in to be a part of helping out this incredible ministry that preserves life, that lets parents know, uh, or mothers know, just how valuable that treasure is within them and gives them resources to help them uh, have that child that maybe they are feeling a little overwhelmed with and looking at options, right? So we want to support them. Maybe you took a bottle. You can bring it in, you can dump it out, and then you can take it back and fill it up again. All right, and then we have the banquet. So you can sign up, sign up at the table in the back for the banquet to learn more about that ministry um, and if you want to partner with them in a greater way. All right, moms with daughters, we have a credible opportunity for you. 
um, we had the True Girl Crazy Hair Tour coming up. All right, that is the end of April here. It is a fun night for you and your tween daughters. Um, and I feel like tween is so broad now, right? It could be an 8-year-old. It could be a 14-year-old. <laughs> it really is the gamut. And so sign up to come and be a part of this. It is April 26th, that Friday. We are looking to get the group rate. If we have 10 or more people sign up through us by April 20th, the ticket price will be $15. You can get more information on the app. Um, so go check that out. And uh, we also have women. We have our Bible study coming up this Tuesday. Uh, I love this time. It is a wonderful time to get to know each other and to dive into God's word in a greater way. And to even realize that those struggles that we face, we're not alone. And to share the victories, to share the testimonies, because that also encourages our faith. And so make sure you come out this Tuesday, and that is at 6.30. 6.30 this Tuesday. All right. And with that, Pastor Stephen Mamie. Okay, go for it, Miss. Yes, we go for it. Yes, yes. We've got a couple of testimonies to start out here this morning. Good morning. Good to see you all here this morning. Well, you know that a few weeks ago, um, Susan and Mary went on a missions trip to Cuba. And so we wanted to spend just a few minutes, have them come up and explain yeah. and share a little bit about their experience there. Do you want to hear that? Yeah, I think it's always great. So let's have them come up. We've got some slides here, some photos also that they could um, share. But maybe you could just begin. I know you're going to have to share a microphone. but <coughs> Yeah. <laughs> So what do we got here? So let's just, you could look at, the, at them this oh. way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So maybe just begin by, you know, sharing why you wanted to go to Cuba. Was there a reason that you decided? Have you been on a mission trip before? Well, for me, I hadn't even thought about it. <laughs> I have been on one mission trip before. I went to the Dominican about 20 years ago. So that was way, way back, and I'd forgotten a lot about it. But uh, Jason came up to me one Sunday and said, Mary wants to go to Cuba, and she would like someone to go with her. <laughs> <laughs> we do support Think Missions. Uh, yeah, and, and Jason's so, gone a church, yeah. like three times, and so I, I, you've all heard his testimony. So we're here kind of just to reiterate exactly what he experienced and, and what it meant to us. So I'm going to let Mary say why she so, wanted to go. Yeah. <laughs> or, or, or what are some of the things that you took part in when you were there? Maybe. Um, well, to, to give an overview of what we were doing there, I think Missions goes into Cuba, and there's small house churches all over Cuba. They're not allowed to have big churches. They're not allowed to build churches. Um, they're communist, and they have been suppressed. A lot of the churches in the beginning were bulldozed, I guess. They, they just weren't allowed to function. But they let people have these small churches, so it's like you, you're a you're a church leader, half of your house, your church meets in it, you live in the other half. So what they, what we went in there um, to do is we had a conference, pulled all these church leaders from a certain district, so like they might have come from two, three hours away even. Um, they come to this conference, we brought in a whole bunch of supplies, which was what we gathered in the suitcases, gave them all these supplies, which um, from... Yeah. What yeah. I was told, we'll to like, they can't get history. any medicine whatsoever. So to get a bottle of Tylenol is, like, outrageous to them. It's like they're so, they're so thankful for all these little things that seem like nothing to us. Um, but we give them supplies. We gave each of these pastors, they're, they're called the missionaries, but they're Cuban people who have um, these churches. They're, they're just the, the local people with these local ch ch churches. Um, they get, we gave them all like a month's salary. It was a little bit more than a month's salary, which was like $25. Um, and we preached to them. We, we all just, it was like a bunch of church services. So we were all um, just refreshing them. Um, and then some of them who were uh, most in need, we gave money to actually buy a building and pay their salary. So um, that's, that's the overview of, uh, what it was all about. So you did see poverty. 
Oh, we saw lots of poverty. Yeah. Lot, it, it was beyond what you can imagine. I mean, we were fortunate enough to stay in, I guess, what they called their conference center, which was a church that was built pre-revolution, which was before 1953. And that, that church was allowed to stand. I'm not sure why, but uh, it was very nice. I mean, you look at it and totally Cuban, <laughs> but but you look outside the window. Yeah. That is Cuban. Yeah. maybe go through the photos here just one at a time and you can maybe explain what it is we're seeing that's the church the one that you're just you want to take to the next slide yeah there okay this one lady which yeah there were there were a group of men that you can't see sitting there who were deaf and she was signing oh. signing to them so on the right and then that's a means of transportation on the other side you know they you see the old cars like the 50s cars, and, and they're all over because they can't bring new cars in, and they have to fix these cars, make new parts for them. Forever. Yeah, forever. forever. These cars are going to be around forever until they can something happens. So the f the yeah, yeah, gas is a big yeah. challenge. Yeah, here's, here's what you see outside. And that's Susan giving her ser her message, right, with a translator. Yes, yes, we were uh, <laughs> we were <laughs> we were challenged with writing messages. I mean, and I don't think either of us has ever done it before. Mm -hmm. uh, Mary even had a word for Cuba, though, which was awesome. just amazing. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. You know, the one thing I do want to tell them about, though. Well, oh, okay. This is this is part of it picture with with all of us there is when we were at the home ch church that we went to Mary Kathy and I and our translator Walter went to this church and um, it really touched our hearts I mean it touched mine big time and I'm sure it did yours too this is um, so you can see what it looks like um, everything there is just kind of crumbling and falling apart and old. This, this is their church, and it was about the size of the stage, probably, <laughs> the total size. That, that family there, the guy in the back is the pastor of that church and his wife in the pink shirt and his son and daughter. Um, and this is the people that our church was able to help to buy a building for and support. Um, yeah, it's going straight to those folks right there, so it's a pretty it's awesome thing. which is what the cost was to buy a home church, to buy a new home, or not a new home, <laughs> a different home, a larger home, so they could have church. Because people were actually standing outside the door, you know. And, and talk about worship. These yep. people know how to worship. Yeah. I mean, it is, yeah, it is amazing to see them worship. I mean, they, they don't hold back. <laughs> they know what God has done for them. Let's yeah, go ahead everything. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say flip the slide and we'll. Yeah, I was just going to say every time we would go into a service um, and we were, it was kind of like back-to-back -back church services this whole time. We would show up right on time. If the service was at 8, we'd be there. And it was like they were already there for an hour. On their knees. And on their knees, crying out, praying, worshiping, just is amazing. Like they were already in, in session. Um, but that was just typical. And this is, a, this is that large old church that for whatever reason was able to still exist and these people um, were just people from the local area the city of Santiago um, and I just want to say they're really thin people um, they their uh, their economy is getting worse and worse and worse um, it was bad but it's it's just it's getting crucially worse um, the price of like an egg is a dollar twenty, one yeah. egg. One egg. And on the black market, it's like three twenty. So, just to give you an one idea, egg. they were getting rations um, for the like the monthly food is now lasting them two days. That's that's all they're able to give them. Oh um, and the the wages were like thirty dollars a month. Now they're about sixteen because of inflation. So that's all they get for like the whole month. So this picture here, <coughs> this is. 
again, just that's transportation. Transportation. You know, you would see people. They had these little huts along the road where people would stand under just waiting for cars to come by. They were hitchhiking, looking for a ride somewhere. We had, on one of the church services we went to on Sunday, there was a mother and her son. They had a child dedication. I guess there was three mothers, right? And, yeah, and this mother and her son got up at 5 o'clock in the morning to get to the church service to have her son dedicated at 10.15. Wow. So they, they had no idea. And, and when Mary was talking about <coughs> their goods being expensive, our interpreter, Walter, who we fell in love with, <laughs> yeah, he was great. And his wife was pregnant and, had, and was going to be having a baby soon. Well, when you go, they have socialized medicine there, and it doesn't cost anything to go to the hospital, but you have to be sure and take your own medication, your own sutures, anything you might need for a surgery or any kind of whatever you're in for, because they don't have it. They have nothing to help them with that. But they have great spiritual hunger. They yeah. certainly do. Let's flip the next slide. Let's go on to the next one. So this is, this is showing you the, um, these are all of the church leaders in the place on top of this building. It was like the top floor where we taught them. And they, they just eat up the word of God. They're amazing. Mm. Worship is so passionate and fervent. Um, in the last slide, it was showing you we had bagged up all these supplies and were able to give each one of them a bag, and they were all holding them up. Um, yeah, that was us sorting through all the all the different things that we took, the medicine and Band-Aids and toothbrushes and combs <laughs> and just these simple, yeah. cheap things that mean so much to them. Yeah. Let's go to the next slide, another one. There's Mary preaching. There's Mary preaching this morning. Yeah. Give her um, a word. Yeah, we were we were both certainly stretched. We had never written a sermon before either of us, and never obviously spoken <laughs> to anyone, let alone church leaders. And it, it sort of felt like, what are we doing here? This is crazy. Jason, but what did you do? Those those translators make you sound great. They like do. you talk, and nobody understands what you're saying, and the interpreter just gives it out and preaches. And so it was it was actually a great way to give a first. <laughs> Most definitely. Most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> There's, There's your car. There's your cars. That's what you see. Wow. Yeah. And it's not because they just write those cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Wow. wow. One thing that touched me was when we went to that home church that you guys have helped to <laughs> give a new one to. I was sitting there, in, just sitting there in the front row, and I looked down, and I wish I would have taken a picture of this. But they, I mean, th this, this house was, like she said, just falling apart. Mm. There was nothing good about it other than the worshipers. But I looked down, and I saw this tiled floor. It was a ceramic tiled floor that went back, I'm sure, to the 1950s. And it showed what a nice house that was at one time. Showed mm. you what they did have and how far it has come how far it has gone downhill. Yeah. Another slide. Do we have any more slides? Oh, oh. I guess that's it. Well, anything else you'd like to share that was just impacting to you of how your life was changed by going on a mission, <laughs> by doing what you did, stepping out? Because, you know, this was stepping out of the boat. You know, sometimes God would walk mm -hmm. with him. He, you do have to break barriers of things that you think, I'd never do that. But then God's saying, come on, if you do it with me. <laughs> so would Couldn't you have done it without him? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, there's no way. <laughs> so your life changed by going. Would you go again? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. All right, well, give him a hand for just coming up and sharing. Here. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Glory to that God. That's good. Well, we're going to continue on with our message this morning. If you have your Bible with you, open to Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7. We're going to talk today a little bit about living with kingdom purpose. Living with kingdom purpose. If you need a Bible, raise your hand. The ushers are here. They could 
to share with you one of our church Bibles. We so recommend that you lay your own eyes on the word of God. Yes. This is a living word. And I, I do believe the Holy Spirit has more uh, opportunity to speak to your heart when you actually look at the words on the page of the Bible. Because you're honoring him. You're yep. saying, I want to hear you talk to me. And so he, if you don't have a Bible, again, I think everybody was served a Bible. Let's just pray before we begin. Father, we are here, Lord, in this place this morning to learn of you. And we just declare by faith, Lord, that our ears are open and our yes. hearts are receptive. And we're asking you, Holy Spirit, help us understand and teach us how to live with kingdom purpose, your kingdom purpose. And Jesus, you said that if we lift up your name, today we lift up your name. Yes. When, then when a person, when we lift up your name, you'll draw all people, all men to yourself. And Lord, that's what we ask you to do this morning as we speak the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come, make these words real. Help us all to have a living, vibrant relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everybody said, amen, amen. Well, okay, so we are here. It's one week after Easter. I hope you had a good week after Easter, mm -hmm. after we celebrate the resurrection of Christ. There's a fist up there. Yeah. yeah. Well, we like some enthusiasm. <laughs> you know, and I was thinking, like, if we lived back in that day, uh, and Scripture says that Jesus, for 40 days after he rose from the dead, he appeared to people. Right. He appeared to his disciples. And at one time, he appeared to over 500 of them. And I thought, you know, if you and I lived in that day, we could have been there. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't that have been awesome? Yeah. It would have been amazing, like mind-blowing. Here yes. he is in a flesh and bone body. Some of them may have seen him crucified, died on a cross, buried. And here he is walking in front of you yeah. with a, a flesh and bone, a solid body. And he had a specific purpose. Uh, for those appearances. He didn't just right. appear just to go, wow, look at me, you know, like I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. I mean, scripture says. I said, saw a movie like that. <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he was back all right. <laughs> and in a really good way. You know? Hallelujah. Because it said he appeared to them for a reason. He talked to mm -hmm. them about the kingdom of God. Yeah. And I can imagine, I can only imagine what he might have talked about. We all know, like on the road to Emmaus, it said he spoke to those two disciples. And their eyes were held. They didn't really recognize right at the time on the road that it was Jesus. Mm -hmm. But they, he was explaining to them about himself that how everything written of him in the law and the prophets and the Psalms had to be fulfilled. Yeah. And... Jesus coming as the Messiah, the way he did, fulfilled over 300 prophecies that were written about him in the Old Testament. They were written, many of them, centuries before. Correct. Even actually some of them. 700. Yeah, 700, 700 years. 1,000 years yeah. before. And we have to remember, we've got to remember that the Bible is a prophetic book. Okay? It foretells the future. Yes. And... You know, Jesus coming as Messiah fulfilled, uh, again, over 300 of those prophecies. And there's really no book on earth like the Bible. Amen. Especially when it comes to foretelling the future and then fulfilling it to the very word, the mm -hmm. very detail. The probability or odds of that happening, somebody giving a prophecy five, seven hundred years saying this is what's going to happen. And then... That many centuries later, the odds of that happening that uh, one, person for one person could accurately fulfill, it, it, this is, I mean, I looked some of this up, and people who like mathematics <laughs> gave this about that, those kinds of odds. They said for one person to fulfill just eight of the 300 prophecies, it would be likening to, to taking a, a place like the state of Texas, covering it with silver dollar pieces, two feet thick, then taking one red silver dollar, and in the midst of all those, somehow, you know, mixing it all in somewhere, burying it, and then blindfolding a person, 
give them one opportunity, find the red silver dollar. Now, what would be the odds of that happening? I mean, pretty much it's astronomical and it's zero. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what it is. It's like one to the whatever, you know, trillionth, trillionth, trillionth possibility. But that's, those are the odds of that happening. And Jesus, but Jesus yes. did fulfill yes. those prophecies. And, you know, there are other prophecies that he's going to fulfill. Because come on. there are some that have not come to pass yet that will happen at his second coming and even in the millennial reign of Christ. Right. So we can have faith. Right? Yes. If he fulfilled those prophecies to the day, he's going to fulfill the ones that are still in the Bible yet to come. Come on. In the Old Testament book of Daniel, this is why I had you turn there, that book was written 600 B.C. And in the seventh chapter, did I give you the, the reference? <laughs> Daniel 7, 27. Daniel 7, yeah, 27. That chapter in particular speaks several times about the coming kingdom reign of Christ on this earth. Yeah. One day he's coming back and his kingdom reign is going to actually be visible on this earth. He'll set up full dominion. There'll be no more death. Hallelujah. No more injustice, no more crying, sighing, no more grave. No more pain. Daniel 7, 27 says this, Then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and yeah. all dominions shall serve and obey him. So there's coming a day when every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess and come under his lordship. Yes. And the kingdom, it says here, will be an everlasting kingdom, a visible one. Where he's going to rule with perfect justice, he's going to rule with mercy, goodness, and love. Won't that be a great time? Yeah. yeah. You know, when Jesus came the first time, he announced that the kingdom of God was at hand. If you've read the Gospels, you hear him say that. He preached, the kingdom of God is at hand. And it was like he inaugurated. Yes. He came and he inaugurated the coming of his kingdom on earth. And what did he do? He healed the sick. He cleansed lepers. He drove out demons. Yes. And really, when he was doing this, he was saying that God's rule as king is coming on the scene. It's coming to the earth. And it's it, as king, and he's, going, he's breaking. He did break. Bro he, it's broken into the present age. Yes. To defeat evil, to defeat the reign of the kingdom of Satan. Isn't that awesome? So his, God's rule is king and, and reigning is king. When he said the kingdom of heaven is at hand, we have to look at what he did to show the kingdom. Right. Again, I say he healed the sick, he cleansed the lepers, he cast out demons. He did good things. He loved people. He showed them, he pointed them the way yes. to know the Father. He, and he would say, tell people, like when he sent his disciples out, to, he gave them their, his authority and he said, do the same thing. Right? And tell them what? The kingdom of heaven has come near you. Hallelujah. It's like you've touched the kingdom of God. And we believe that Christians now by faith, because Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. Right. See, it's not, it's, it's already, but not yet. <laughs> because it's not yet completely visible, but when the kingdom of God and the knowledge of the kingdom lives on the inside of you, then you can bring the kingdom yes. into your sphere of influence. You can manifest the yeah. kingdom. And we believe Christians now by faith are commissioned and empowered because Jesus said, you go into the world with my authority. But, and by the Spirit of God, do the works of the kingdom. Bring the kingdom influence to every place that we go. We can have a foretaste yeah. of what's coming. <clears throat> the, here's the important thing. is The key is that if you're born again, you are in the kingdom of God right now. Yes. Not going to be. Yeah. You're in the yeah. kingdom of God yeah. right now. And what was that, Daniel 20, uh, 7, 27? What's that? What's that? Who's going to be reigning with him? Who's going to get the kingdom? I think, yeah. What's it? Yeah. yeah. Who's going to get the kingdom? If you're born again, guess what? You're, you're going to be getting the kingdom. Remember in Luke 12, Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added to you. 
And then he said, it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Yeah. You and I. See, we're in training ground right now to be able to rule and reign with Christ. Mm-hmm. We, we, what has been taught mostly is Jesus came. And the reason he came is to take your sin, and he's going to die on the cross, and three days later he's going to raise again from the dead. And if you believe that, then you you're, you got a ticket to heaven. You're going to be when you die, then you'll go to heaven. Yeah. That's true. However, that is a very small part of why he came. Yeah. You remember what happened at the very beginning? God created everything, then he gave dominion to who? And Eve. Eve. (laughs) Come on now. That's right, honey. (laughs) (laughs) And there's the women said, amen. (laughs) Says, that's real good preaching now. (laughs) (laughs) But if we just see a limited reason why Jesus came, we'll only be limited in what we understand about the kingdom. What we want to do is understand the kingdom. How many times did Jesus, you go, it's unbelievable how many times it was spoken of in the New Testament about the kingdom. He preached the kingdom. He he preached the kingdom. We've got to understand the fullness of why we're here. Because you and I don't want to live in a limited way and a limited understanding. We want our minds and hearts to be open to understand what are we doing. We don't want to miss a big part of our mission here on the earth. We don't want to miss a part of my purpose here on the earth. I don't want to stand before Jesus one day and say, he looks at you and said, you only did, you hardly did anything. He might even say, you didn't even get to the first part of your ministry. We don't want that. We want it completed, amen. We are here to help establish the kingdom of God. We are here, how do you going to, we establish the kingdom of God first, why and how? First to ourselves. We, first to ourselves. We renew our minds to the word of God. And then we start to apply the word of God in our daily way we think do you because you'll butt up against oh that was a wrong thought oh that was another wrong thought and then you go around and say I don't think this way anymore I don't think this way anymore I don't think this way anymore (laughs) am I by myself or what yeah (laughs) but then you start to think the way God thinks you start to establish the kingdom of God within you And then what do you do? Well, then I'm dealing with my family at the same time. I want my family to understand this. I want my family to understand this. And we work at it and we work at it. And then God is asking you to bring that into the sphere of your life everywhere you go. Because we're establishing the kingdom of God. We renew our mind. We exchange our old way of thinking and we take his way of thinking. We point people to Jesus. Amen? That's right. We are being trained right now to rule and reign with Christ in the millennial reign. We don't want to put this stuff aside. We want to say, no, I want to understand this. I want to fully understand this. Because if we don't, then, you know what, I don't want to be, I don't want to end up being a landscaper in heaven. Well, nothing wrong with that. Nothing, you know what, but there was one time in my life that I had this thing with my eye. I couldn't see out of my right eye. And I told him, Lord, I'm just so glad that I know you, and I'd be happy just to be a garbage man in heaven. But you know what? He has something better for you. He does. If you go to Revelation, you look at the first three chapters, and it says, he who overcomes, look at that phrase, he who overcomes, it's going to be amazing. It's amazing, and he's talking about you and me if we go and work. And he says, he who overcomes will sit with him in his throne. But, you know, praise God, we're here to help make other disciples. Yeah, be a laborer in the harvest. That's exactly right. 
that way we're going to find our purpose and why we're here on the earth and what are we living for. What are we living for? You might be thinking, how in the world can I do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, establishing the kingdom isn't just, you know, about supernatural things. Right. It's about lo learning to love and serve other people. Come on. This is what Jesus did. He said, I didn't come to be served, but to serve and give my life as a ransom for many. And so this is part of establishing the kingdom of God, too. Absolutely. To learn how to love and serve others, like with our time, our talent, our treasure, to be a blessing to others. We, we're supposed to be learning to give our life away. Yes. Right? And you, and you would be thinking, how am I supposed to do this? When you hear this, you might be like, I can't do all that. <laughs> and you can. We can't do it in our own strength. Come this on. That's why we've been talking some weeks past about Jesus saying, you know, you're going to need power. You're going to need to be endued with power from on high to be a witness for me. Yes. We do need the power of God. We need the infilling of the Holy Spirit. We want to say, God, like, I need everything. I need all the power yes. that can work through me in order to be a witness for you in the earth. Because when you do see the bigger picture like this, you recognize, I, I need some help. <laughs> <laughs> Major help. You can't just walk out the Christian life in your own strength. You'll right. fail. Because the scripture says it's not in your own strength that we are working this out. It's in his strength. Yes. He's all the while at work within us. And he's creating the desire to do his will. But that, de that demands that we lean deeply on him. Come on. That we get up in the morning and we don't just run off on our day and do our own thing. It's like, Lord, you're in charge of my day. Like, you're the Lord here. Help me. And, and of course, we, we promote sitting with the Lord, with yes. the Holy Spirit, and reading just a chapter a day. We're going to make another plug for getting involved in our yearly reading plan yes. on the app. It is just awesome. Your life will be changed. I guarantee it. If you read one chapter a day and just think about what he's saying and just participate in that. I Add guarantee to the comments, will, yes. Yes, you will. But we're all called by God to live for him. We're all Every saved person is to live a life you know, of kingdom purpose right? and meaning at its very center. And when you decide to go all in, that's really when it gets good and it makes sense. Come on. You got to go all in because Jesus even said a kingdom divided yeah. against itself that's will good. fall. So we don't really add Jesus to our life. I mean, this is part of this ticket to heaven idea. Right. I gave my life to the Lord. I'm good for the rest of whatever the years I live. I do my own thing, and when I die, I go to heaven. That's not, you won't, you really won't even live a productive, fruitful Christian life. Right. With that kind of thinking. Come on. We don't add Jesus to our otherwise busy life. He's really meant to become the center of our life. Come on. You know, God created us this way. I mean, he's the giver of life, so he, <laughs> he's to be the center then of our life. And his intention is that the meaning and purpose and direction of our life comes from knowing him. Yes. We aren't meant to live some aimless life. And, and some of you might be thinking, well, I don't, I'm far from an aimless life. I'm just so busy. I, can, I don't even know, you know, what to do next. I have so much on my plate. How many of you could yeah. say you feel like that? Nobody's yeah. busy? Everybody's busy. Yeah. Oh. Gee. But you, well, you better get busy. <laughs> <laughs> With God's stuff, yeah. With God's stuff. But, I mean, stuff. you might be lead a very busy life. I don't know of anybody, you know, that isn't feeling like I'm just gold burning, you know, candle mm -hmm. at both ends. It's yeah. just life is just busy, busy, busy. Most everyone in here would say that. But busyness can also mean that you're going in maybe too many directions. Come on. I want you to turn to Luke chapter 10. Come on. We're going to look at this scripture. Luke 10, starting with verse 38. Remember the story of the sisters, Mary and Martha? Come on. Jesus teaches us a really, an extremely important principle about the priorities of our life. Come on. This little, this little story here. Very good. Luke 10 starts with verse number 38. It says, as Jesus... And his disciples were on their way. He came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet 
listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and mm -hmm. asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. She's like, <laughs> I got so much stuff going on. You know, I'm worn out just trying to make this all happen. And look what, look what the Lord answers. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you're worried and upset about many things. <laughs> but few things are needed. Or indeed, only one. There. Mary has chosen what's better, and it will not be taken away from her. Busyness in our life mm. doesn't mean you're living close to Jesus. You might come to church every week, sit here for an hour and a half or whatever it might be, walk out of here, and the rest of your week is just go, 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 go. <laughs> Filled like with your own distractions and priorities mm. and worries. Martha was actually right in the next room. Think about it. She was close in proximity to Jesus, but she was too distracted to be listening right. to what he was saying, hearing, because there was just other things preoccupying her mind. She was distracted by all the cares of life. And I think back on my own life, you know, when we began to just when these truths began to dawn. When we us. started to become all in. Yeah. I mean, my life at that point didn't take on, I was 35 years old, like didn't take on true meaning, direction, and purpose till right. I was 35 years old. And I was, it was, to look at our life, I was a busy mom. I worked full time as an RN, a nurse. Mm -hmm. We were raising two children. You know, but looking back, it just seemed as though when I find, when I understood the meaning of life, that God had actually had a plan and purpose for our <laughs> life that didn't look like what we were doing. It was like, no wonder I felt like I was on a hamster wheel, like going around and around. I'm just busy. I'm going around and around until Jesus got my attention. Come on now. And he's like, get off the wheel and see what life is really about. And we, I, we aren't meant to, to be on that hamster wheel. We're not meant to just live a busy life and running on empty all the time and go over here and then go over here, aimless here, aimless there. Listen, Jesus is life. He's the giver of all life. So wouldn't you think that he could define life for us? <laughs> yeah. If we ask him. If we ask him, <laughs> you know. Him. We, we've got to ask him, what is our life about? He wants you to be involved with the kingdom. Come on now. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we're going to find out how to truly live life when we go all in with Jesus. Yeah. And how do we do that? Again, we, we renew our mind with the word of God. We start to put it all in practice. And when you start to do that, like a whole new world opens up to you. Yeah. Just like yeah. Pastor Mamie said, 35 we finally figure out what we were supposed to do. So if, if you, you listen, you young guys, I'm telling you right now, don't fall for it if you're in high school. Okay, what are you going to do for the rest of your life? You know what the best answer is? Follow Jesus. Yeah. I don't know exactly. I mean, Jesus said if you you know, you're born of his spirit, it's like the wind blowing. You you'll find where you're supposed to go. Come on now. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And when you go all in, your life starts to blossom. It's like going to the lake or going to the, going to the ocean. You could go to the ocean and sit on the beach. But if you get a goggles on and you go in the water and you swim underwater, whoa, a whole world opens up to you. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's like what you do when you open yeah. yourself up yeah. to the Lord <clears throat> and what he wants to yeah. do. What do you tell his disciples? What was that prayer we prayed? Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. We are to help bring about the rule and reign of his kingdom. And at the day of Pentecost, like it said, Pastor Mamie was just saying, you can't and I can't do this without his help. 
in the day of Pentecost, Jesus told them. They were with him for three years. He said, hey, guys, don't go anywhere yet. Then they got filled with the Holy Ghost, and then they went out, and what did they do? They changed the world. The world. Mm -hmm. (laughs) See, when you go all in with Christ, you're going to find your purpose in the kingdom. We don't want to be having our life spent on things like Martha that at the end it doesn't really matter. He's asking us, you know what? Pick up your cross, follow him, walk by faith. He's he's saying to you and to me, get out of the boat. Get out of the boat and walk on water with me. He's going to ask you to do things you've never done before. You know, he's going to ask you to do simple things and then things that really are hard. (laughs) Look what it says in Ephesians chapter 2. Or, yeah, Yeah. chapter 2, verse 10. You know, he's going to challenge us. Mm -hmm. But we face the challenges understanding that the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, is helping us do this. Yes. This Again, you've got to lean deep into him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It says what? For we are his workmanship. Let that sink in. We're his workmanship. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. We're created in Christ Jesus for good works. Mm-hmm. Which, this is amazing. God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Yeah. Again, the, he's going to ask us to do some simple things, and he's going to ask us to do some challenging things. Mm-hmm. But we can do it because we'd be empowered by the Spirit. And when we do this, we're going to find our purpose. We're going to find a life that is an abundant life. It's also going to train us to rule and reign with Christ in his kingdom. Yeah. Really, life gets exciting. When you begin to go all in. You're like, I don't even know what this all means. But right. I know you're good. And I, and I know that's good enough for me. This is how we get out of the boat. It's like I think of these two ladies who went to Cuba. You broke a barrier, right? Yeah. I can't do this. I can't. I can't. And you discovered you could. It's like, how did I do that? You did it because you, want, <laughs> because you wanted to obey, number one. It takes a desire to obey. There. And then God meets you right there. When you feel like you're still not here, you're still not here. And then as soon as you go, you're like, oh, my gosh, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes we want to feel the strength whenever we're like, I, I can't, I can't, I can't. But we have to keep our eyes on him. Come He's on. saying, if you just walk with me, the strength will come. And it's like, I'm, you know, we, we can sometimes go <laughs> tiptoe at first. And then when you realize he's trustworthy, yes. it gets so much easier to keep taking those steps and taking those steps. It's like if he met me back there, he'll meet me here. Amen. Right? And it's exciting. Yes, it is. It's an exciting life. Like be, I, when I think about like in the Bible, we have like five things here that you see some general consistent purposes, kingdom purposes that God has yes. for his people. The one is you were planned for a loving relationship with God. We have this up on the screen if you if you flip that up there. You there were planned you for a loving relationship with God. That's God awesome. God loved you from the foundation of the world. When you begin to read Ephesians chapter 1, you realize what? You knew me from the foundation of the world and you loved me and you had a plan for me? Come on and now. then he said, I, I adopted you into the family. That's what he tells us in Ephesians 1. You were formed to be a part of God's family. This is good news. This is really good news. Because this is, when, you know, all the people in the body of Christ become your fam- the family of God. That's right. And then you were created to become like Christ. We're born of his spirit. The wow. Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. To help us to grow spiritually. See, he's going to keep prompting you. Take another step. Yep. Take another step. It is not just a ticket to heaven. I got it in my back pocket. No. Yeah. It's far more than that. You were shaped for serving God. Like God wired you in certain ways with your personality and gifting so that you could serve God. Yes. And, it, and really serving God means serving and loving people. Yes. Because God loves people. And we're his hands and feet in the earth. So he's, if we're going to serve God, he's going to... Take your gifts and say, I want you to love and serve other people. Amen. 
And then you were, of course, what we're talking about, made for a mission. Mm -hmm. Life isn't just about doing, you know, the thing that the world will tell you. Make all your money, save, you know, everything you can, do it all for yourself. You were made for a, a kingdom mission. Sweet. Kingdom purpose. So let's go back to Ephesians 2.10 for a moment. Yeah, yeah. Look at this again. It says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for what? For good works. Yeah. yeah. Which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. I, I, that was such a revelation mm -hmm. when we were 35 years old. It was like, what? God had good works for me? I never asked you about this, Lord. Have you ever asked the Lord? But if you begin to ask, well, what are these good works? I mean, often it's just do, do the good right in front of you. Yes. When you see a need, right. meet it. It begins, God, God will direct a moving vehicle. That's you good. know, if you just sit and park all the time, he's going to say, well, just get up and start and help somebody in front of you. And you begin to find how he's wired you. Yes. You know, some people will find, you know, they're, they're going to like the disciples. Some people like Susan, you know, just serve. I want to just get in there and Dan, her husband. It's like, just give me something with my hands to help people and serve. So as we get moving, God begins to actually begin to show you what your Come gift on. is. That's for sure. And so he's going to use your personality yes. in all of these things for the sake of the kingdom. You, you were put on the earth to let your, the light that God has in you shine. Come on. And make a difference in the life of other people. That's right. To make Jesus known to people. To stand up like for the marginalized. Yep. And build the kingdom of God by loving and serving other people. I mean, we're meant to do good, like to be to contribute for the good where we are. You know what Jesus said, "Do unto others as you would have them do unto you." This is part of establishing the kingdom, uh, and, and to give something back. Right. Like sometimes, you know, yeah. to pay it forward. We've all heard that. Like do something good to pay it forward. Yeah. Because it's so easy sometimes for people to just. You know, take the easy path. You know, we can we we sort of like this to receive, yeah. right? It's like we look for a handout. You know, we we want to be a spectator. We want to be a consumer. We give little effort. You know, that's what this world system is telling us. Yeah. It's trying to cause you to be dependent on the system. It's trying to tell you that you're a victim. Listen, you're not a victim. No. It, unless you decide you are. Not in Christ, you aren't. You know, because God has a plan for your life. It's a kingdom plan, and it it's goes beyond what you think you can do. Yeah. It's greater than what you think you can do because we're doing it with him. We're to be influencers for good and everything. That means stand up for righteousness, say what's wrong is wrong, and what's right is right. Mm -hmm. Come on now. And that's going to get really important in the days ahead. This system will tell you that you are a victim, and it will pity you. It, the system, the world system will pity you so that you become dependent on the system, and then when you're dependent on the system, if you look at the whole picture of everything, then they got you. Yeah, yeah. Then they got you, and it's called control, you know? We don't want to be controlled by anybody but the Holy Spirit, amen? Amen. That's so true. You know... 1 Peter, let's go there, 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter is before 2 Peter. You guys are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we know the Bible. <laughs> you know, when you talk about this, the, the system and, you know, the system, meaning the world system. That's right. You know, can make you feel like. Sometimes you're just so broken and give you, like you said, a lot of pity. Very good, and yeah. You, know, you may have come through the school, as they say, of hard knocks. Maybe your life wasn't great. Yeah. But you do have the greater one in you. Come That's on now. You have to remember. The greater one is in me, though. My whole life is redefined. I'm his workman. Yes. I'm not who I was. And look at this. First Peter, yeah. yeah, chapter 2, verse 9. This is, this is your true identity, folks. Look at this. If you're born again, this is talking about you. It says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, 
that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Oh, Glory to God. Scripture. You know, we come to him, sinners saved by grace. Yeah. But he doesn't leave us there. Do you understand that? Now, he, he, when you come as a sinner, you kneel down before him and give him your life. You're born of his spirit, and you are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. That old man passed away. You're no longer that. You're no longer a sinner saved by grace. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus right now. You are a royal priesthood. You are a royal priesthood. You're chosen people. Yeah. This is where we got to wake up to. Yeah. Then the Holy Spirit takes us on this path. He says, okay, we can cut this off of you. You don't need that anymore. That's the wrong idea. Oh, don't think that way. Stop this talk. It's called <laughs> sanctification. Yeah. It's the Bible word, sanctification. Yeah. You're actually just growing up in the spirit. Yeah, that's right. yeah. <laughs> you're, you're getting out of diapers, and you're going to start to crawl, and then all of a sudden you're going to start to walk, and then it's called sanctification. The Holy Spirit prunes us, and we want to be pruned. Why? Because we're learning how to rule and reign with Christ when it's time. Yeah. We don't want to fall behind, amen? God is so good. And, 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 you know, when I think about sanctification, it's like we all come into the kingdom with a lot, holding a lot of old baggage. Come on now. Right? <laughs> in our, oh, yes, you do. You know, in our character, <laughs> in our thinking, like what you're saying. And it'll hinder us from yep. who God's called us to be and yes. made us to be if we don't pursue knowing, show me, help me. And this is part of the pruning. This is part of God saying, I'm gonna, you need to cut that off. Or you need to break that barrier that's yeah. holding you back. Go ahead and do that. He'll prompt us to do these things. The church is made up of ordinary, everyday people. Come on. But we're chosen and special to God. And being filled with his spirit, you know, we, we, again, we are to be contributors right. to life. We bring life on the scene in our home, <laughs> in our relationships, on the job. We're to yeah. build wherever we are, whatever sphere of influence we have. And it really does start in our homes. Your, yes, Your homes Absolutely. are like your first place of discipleship. Yeah. This is where God trains us how to raise up a disciple. Come on. And he's going to do it with your own unique personality. See, there God, you go. God's going to use every part of your life in order to shape you for the good works, the kingdom works that he has for you to do. Come on. And lots of things in our life, our family life, our close relationships, you know, how we grew up, circumstances, maybe that were beyond our control. Right. Painful experiences right. have a way of shaping us, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, they do. Every one of us have experienced some painful things in our past. Yeah. And, of course, the devil then wants to, Make you think that what happened to you makes you, you're misshapen. Now you've become a misfit. Ooh. And even if you come into the church, well, deep inside, you, you're gonna, you, people often still feel like, I don't, I don't know if I fit here. I don't come know on. if I fit here. This so is, like what Pastor good. Steve was saying, you become the righteousness of God in Christ. You're a family member. Right. You know, God still has a cleanup job in all of us to do. True. With sanctification. But when we hold on to our real identity, we can get rooted then. Hallelujah. And the biggest part, sometimes the biggest things that have been painful in our life, you know, the God will use that biggest hurt if you give it to him. Mm -hmm. If you go to him for healing, because he's the healer. Amen. He, he'll comfort you. He'll show you. He'll counsel you through many different ways. So that when other people come with the same issue, you're like, I know what you're talking about. Let me help you Hallelujah. understand, like, this is what Jesus, this is how the Holy Spirit helped me. It becomes a form of your ministry to other people when we let the Lord heal our own broken, painful yes. places in yes. our heart. So true. And so what the devil means for our destruction, we have to remember Jesus is a redeemer. Come on. He can redeem whatever was stolen from us and give back yes. grace upon grace. To actually make it far better than, than you ever thought. He can do exceedingly abundantly, Scripture says, 
far and above all that you can ask or think. Praise God. According to the power that's within us. That should make us happy. Yeah, Smile, man. joyful. Be like, this is awesome. There's potential in my life to change. Like, yes. I am God's masterpiece. That's what that word means. In, I, I, you're his workmanship. Yes. That word in the Greek actually carries the meaning of a masterpiece. In other words, God has put things together in your life to, to make something beautiful. We Glory have to, think to God. That we have to think these ways that I've been empowered and equipped by the Holy Spirit himself. Yes. To yes. do some good works for God. Your life has meaning and it has purpose. I mean, this is on the screen. You, you, you're not who you think you are. Come on. You're not who they say you are. <laughs> you're who he says you Come are. Come on now. Right? Yeah. We just sang that song this morning, right? I am who you say I am. Yeah, that's right. See, he's prepared you for good works. He's ordained you to do good works. Yeah. God has uniquely qualified you through your life, your personality. God loves variety. He loves variety. Come on now. You know what's crazy about this? I looked this stuff up. For instance, God made over 300,000 species of beetles. He loves variety. Yeah. <laughs> Is that like creative overkill? <laughs> Why not stop with a beetle at 100,000? Yeah. Now, this was my favorite one. In one cubic foot of snow, <laughs> there is an estimated 18 million snowflakes, and not one of them are alike. <laughs> and the only one who notices it is God. <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> he loves variety. He loves variety. Heaven is going to be so wild because we're going to have people from every continent, every nation, yeah. every tongue, every tribe. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. it's going to be fun. <laughs> but right now we're learning how to rule and reign with him in the millennial reign. Yeah. See, he's shaped you uniquely to fulfill your purpose and your mission right here where you are. Mm -hmm. Look at this, Psalm 139. I love this. He's made you for good works. He's, Psalm 139, verses 13 and 14. Oh, I love to hear those pages turning. This is really good. He says, you made all, my, all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Yeah. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous, and I well know it. Wow. Yeah. So from these verses, we can see a couple things. We can see a few things like, for one thing, I, you, uh, I'm... Uniquely made. Yes. You're uniquely made. It's just true. No two people in the whole world have the same footprint. Yeah. There you fingerprint. Go. You know, I think voice print. I mean, I think AI may be able to match it to, you know, they even they say, oh, 99%. But in the end, it's still a fraud. Come on. <laughs> it's not you. God gave you your unique voice print, footprint. I mean, so we could then say that God broke the mold whenever he created you because there won't be another like you. <laughs> <laughs> and why did he do this? Because he does like variety. Yes. And he makes you different from other people because he, I think he wants us to know how, just how special you are. It's Amen. Like, well, gonna... Yeah, the second thing we see in this is that I'm wonderfully complex. Complex, yeah. How, how, <laughs> complex, how, many, yeah. how many people are married to someone wonderfully complex? <laughs> no, none of the men raised their hand. I'm surprised. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, we're yeah. so complex. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We're a mystery to ourselves. And, well, that's for sure. Yeah, right? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. It, now, here's the thing. Think about your DNA. This is another thing I looked up. It, the complexity inside our bodies is off the charts. Your body contains 100 trillion cells. 
That just that happens to be a billion times, 1,000 times 100, in case you're wondering. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> the cal human calculator. Our minds are on tilt already, <laughs> like, what? What kind of number is that? Yeah. And each one of those cells contains your DNA. And if you took a DNA, all the information in one DNA, you would fill up a thousand books with 600 pages each. This is your genetic code. Yeah. If you took your, your DNA, which is only five inches long, but it's what is it's 50 trillionths of an inch wide. <laughs> and if you connected all of those, you unwound your DNA and connected all of those, it'd be 95 billion miles long. Yeah, for every cell in your body, all yep. the DNA connected. It would go around the world four million times. That's in you. You didn't know you had that much <laughs> in you, did you? <laughs> That's all in you. See, you are specially made yeah. by God for his purpose and we found out what is one of his purposes. Yeah. So we could be loved by God. Yeah, yeah. You were shaped. You were shaped. We were shaped for kingdom purpose. Come on now. God knit you together. God knew what he was doing. You're not here by accident. Come on. You're not here to just take up space. God made you for a reason. Amen. He knew and he saw you in your mother's womb. Think about that. He loves you. Yeah. And you do matter to God. You matter deeply to God. I mean, so much Jesus proved it by dying on the cross so that you could have a relationship with God and even understand these things. Yes. So we don't live a life that's just purposeless, mm -hmm. aimless, going in all directions, busy, 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 and miss the whole point. Yes. He, sh he shaped you for his kingdom purpose. Yes. And to be loved by him. That's mm -hmm. really our number one purpose is to know his love yes because otherwise it just becomes a bunch of works that we do for god mm. but it, Paul, the ephesians in chapter three tells us that we should pray that we would be rooted deep in god's love yes this is the very rooting of our life that we would know his love for us and then as we uh, we walk with him in that love you realize i'm shaped for a kingdom purpose I'm you, I am uniquely made that he loves me yes and he he wants you to be a part of his his body, we, the church becomes the body of Christ. That's pretty intimate when you think about it. It's amazing. You're a part of his body, and you belong then to a family, the family of God. You do belong somewhere. Like some yes. people, There's a lot of people, even though we're on social media all day long, people can feel very isolated and still alone. But you belong to a, the family of God, and then you... God has ordained that people belong together in local bodies of Christ, like yes. a church, where we can get to know each other and encourage one another, pray for one another, and do life together. Yes, yes. Serve other people. That's when life takes on meaning. When you get a little bit out of yourself, it's not just me and what I'm doing and my money and my job. And when you start looking outward, Jesus came to serve. He gave his life as a ransom for many. Come when on. When we begin to get our eyes outward, it, our whole life begins to change. And so we're here this morning. We're going to close this morning. I guess it's, it's time. We'll, we, we prayed at the beginning. I prayed that the Holy Spirit would begin to show us what kingdom living is about. Yeah. And I believe he's doing that. I believe he did that through this message. And so I just want you to bow your head for a moment. Just think a little bit. What's the Holy Spirit saying to you this morning? Mm-hmm. I hope we've been praying that you would feel and know just how special you are to God. Is he opening up your eyes to see a much bigger story of the Bible and that you actually fit into it? Yeah. You fit into it. For such a time as this, you're here. Come on. So that you could live for kingdom purposes. It's far bigger. Far bigger than what sometimes our little mind and understanding can make up. God had you in mind from the foundation of the world. Mm. <clears throat> and he chose you in love. Yes. He chose you in love. Do you believe it? Jesus made a way for you to be adopted into his family. You're his workmanship. I want you to, th I think the Holy Spirit wants us to really think about that. You are, he's saying, you're my workmanship. Mm. 
And, you know, I think about how that old inspiring quote, when God don't make no junk. That's right. He's not, he, doesn't, he didn't make a mistake. And so, Father, I pray that each person in here, Lord, would feel and know your deep and abiding love for them. I pray they would feel and know how special they are to you. And that even though there may be past mistakes and sins and painful experiences that have made them feel misshapen and like a misfit, Father, I, 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 I pray you would let each person in here know that because you do forgive sins, you do wash them away when people confess them to you, that you can redeem the mistakes and the sins and the painful things of our past. You are the great redeemer, Jesus. You are the healer. You came to give us life abundantly. I pray, Lord, you help each person in here to believe yes. they are who you say they are. Your workmanship, created and designed by your hand to do kingdom works that you've planned for them to do. Lord, show them these things. I pray, Holy Spirit, you just begin to stir up the gift and stir up the understanding within them. Help them to think beyond what they've thought before. Yes. And I pray, Lord, that they would make a decision to live a kingdom life, to slow down, sit at your feet, Jesus, and learn of you, trust you, and tell you, Lord, I pray that he, every one of us would say, I'm going all in. Yeah. Whatever that means, Jesus, you're worth it all. I'm all in. I want to do your will for my life. Not part of it, but all of it. I pray, Father in this room and the people with the sound of my voice, Lord, they're giving themselves completely to you. You gave yourself completely to us. Let us be people that respond with our whole heart. The mission of this church is to help you know God, to find purpose and experience life. And knowing God begins with Jesus. We said this earlier, Jesus came and he died on a cross and he rose from the grave giving us a chance at new life a life with meaning and purpose with direction that comes from him and it, it, it begins with you just saying yes to Jesus yes to Jesus you just say yes I want my sins forgiven I want this new life that you're offering for me. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand high enough so that I can see it. You can slide it right back down and we'll pray. And the miraculous thing is that the Holy Spirit will recreate you and you'll be born of His Spirit. Is there anybody in here today? If you feel the tug of the Holy Spirit, don't resist. Today is the day of salvation. Yes. thank you, Lord, for eternal life. We thank you, Jesus, that you died on that cross to forgive us of our sins. Help us to walk in that newness of life. Yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that powerful message. Uh, I just want to take a quick moment and throughout worship, throughout the message, and then at the end there, I overwhelmingly felt in my spirit that there is somebody that does not believe that they are worthy of love. They do not believe that God could love them or anybody else. And I want to tell you today, you are loved simply because he loves you. So know today, you are loved and you are worthy of the Father's love. So seek him and you will find him and you will discover the treasures that he has placed inside of you, the value he has placed inside of you. You are loved. You are loved. All right, so with that, thank you for joining us today. If you want to apply that message to your life and you want to serve in, in this church and put to work what God has placed in your life, come and see me. I have an application or you can pick one up in the back and let you know that the opportunities that are available for you here, I can tell you we are busting at the seams back in children's and we are looking and having to open another classroom soon, but we can't do that without you. All right, so please sign up for that. If you could stand with me. If you have a prayer need today, our prayer partners are over here to my right. They would like to stand with you on God's word and pray over you and pray with you. 
Enjoy your week this week. As you go, I would like to commission you according to Ephesians. According to Ephesians 3. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly more than all we could ask or think, according to the power at work within us, go with God from this place. You have been commissioned to be a light to the world and to all the people around you. God bless. Have a great week.